Welcome to All Games New and Old, I'm David Rodriguez, and today I'm going to be reviewing Batman the Animated Series Gotham City Under Siege. It was released in 2018 from IDW Games and was designed by Richard Lanius and Michael Gugliano. It plays in 40 to 60 minutes and is for 1 to 5 players. Now, in 1992, before Batman the Animated Series came out, I was a die-hard Marvel fan. I thought DC Comics were kind of stupid. I didn't think they were good at all. I thought Marvel was completely where it's at. And then Batman the Animated Series came out and it blew my mind. I mean, for a uh, after-school cartoon show, it was way darker than anything else I'd seen. It still was okay for kids. It's not like there was blood and whatnot everywhere, but it definitely had a darker feel. The villains were super compelling. Batman was a really interesting character, and I fell in love with Batman, and I fell in love with Batman the Animated Series. I mean, beyond just being a great show on its own, it brought us who, in my opinion, is the best Joker in Mark Hamill, and the character Harley Quinn, who has uh, become pretty dang popular. So, really fantastic uh, all-around series. And I'd long hoped for games that really took place specifically in the animated series setting. And when this came out, I decided I kind of had to get it. At the time, I didn't see very many reviews. I think I saw one playthrough that gave me kind of an idea of what it was about. But no idea if it was good or not. I just went ahead and got it. And I played it once, and then there was a long time before I played it again. And I really wanted to review it, so I played it again several more times, and that's why we have this video. So before I blabber on anymore, I'm going to go ahead and take you to our special guest. Now, this one I think is going to be really special. I got an actual supervillain to tell us all about the theme of this game. Take it away. In this game, Batman and his stupid allies, including Robin, Batgirl, Catwoman, and the Gotham City Police Department, work together to stop an onslaught of his villains from destroying the city. Uh, I'm sorry, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry, did I not introduce myself? How inconvenient of me. I am the Inconveniencer! <laughs> the Inconveniencer? Doesn't sound real menacing. What, what exactly do you do? I utterly wreak havoc on a small and insignificant part of your life. Okay, but what's with the cat ear thing going on? Well, what's more inconvenient than a cat? All right, I guess um, I guess I can't argue with that. That makes sense. Still, I, I kind of hoped I was going to get someone more menacing, you know, more dastardly, more evil. If I was going to get a supervillain, and no offense, but. Gosh, I, I don't think you could really cause too many problems for anybody. Interesting you should say that, David. You know, earlier today, I made my way into your home so I could look over your board games and all of their components. Well, I guess I'd rather you not broken into my house. Yes, well, just before I started looking over all the cards and boards and everything, I got a little hungry, so I had myself a snack. Buffalo wings. Extra saucy. Oh god. You monster! <laughs> then can be as our strikes again! Okay, uh... I I'm gonna need just a, a little time to collect myself. Um, wh why don't I send you to the gameplay video? Oh god, I have so much cleaning up to do. All right, so I'm all set up here to play a two-player game of Batman the Animated Series Gotham City Under Siege, the very long titled game we're talking about today. And I will kind of show you how I set this up because it's going to um, be basically how it works for every new act. There's four acts in the game. So if it's a new turn, you're going to move the act leader token to the person clockwise from you. Uh, if you have Batman in the game, he always starts as the act leader, but this is basically your first player token. It just changes uh, every act. Then you're going to take your character's skill decks, uh, which I have back girls right here. You're going to kind of shuffle them around. You're going to take the top two, look at them, and then you're going to pick one that you want to use 
for that particular act and put it down here. I already put one down for act one, so I'm not gonna do that here. Uh, the one you don't pick, you just put right back down on top of that deck because you're gonna shuffle it uh, at the beginning of the next act anyway. So then you will do the act setup card. So in this case, if I was done with act one and was moving on to act two, or if I was just starting act one, if I didn't have all this out, I would pull out the act two card and then start setting it up. And I'm gonna show you how I did it with the act one card. So this is the story card for this. And there's three different ones for each act and you're gonna pick one randomly. And depending on what's on there, it's gonna affect how you set things up. So in this case, it'll show you based on how many players you have, what you're gonna do. So even if you play solo, you're gonna have two heroes for sure. So depending on how many heroes you have, uh, in this case for two, I'd look over, I'd have four story cards, which I have pulled out here already. I've drawn those randomly from the act one story deck. I have one mastermind. Again, you pull one randomly from the, the master mastermind deck here. And in this case, I pulled out Harley Quinn, everyone's favorite maybe. Uh, <laughs> and then two villains, it says. So in that case, I would go to the bag, this lovely bag they gave you, and you draw out two tiles or however many it says, and you'd start by placing them, placing one in the north battlefield, which is of course up here, and then going around clockwise. So I've already done this, but in this case, I would go, you know, one up here, and then the second one would go here. And you're basically creating stacks. So if there's already a villain over there that is of the same type that you've just drawn, you just add it to that particular stack of villains. So like over here, um, she has uh, one thug and a stack of henchmen and a stack of ninjas. So then you're gonna look at your story cards and your masterminds and see what they say. So in this case, Harley Quinn, when she comes out, says eight villains. So you would go ahead and draw eight more villains and, and put them in the same battlefield that she is in, which I've already done here. That's why we have a big stack of uh, henchmen and, and, uh, and a couple ninjas here. Also, sometimes your story cards, like this one, will just say, place 10 random villain tokens. So that's what I've done. I've gone and much like when you first start, you're just gonna go around like a clock starting at the north battlefield and place 10 tokens all around. So you don't really need to keep that out once you've done that. So I go ahead and move that off to the side. I'm gonna put this act card back here. So it's a, it's a good idea to look at all of your story cards and act card because some of them will have limitations on what you can do in a certain round. Like some of them will say, for instance, that you have to re-roll every six year old in a, in a round, for instance, which is <laughs> really rough and brutal. Expect that in act two. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty nasty, but you wanna look and make sure that they're not putting a limitation on how you roll or if they are, you wanna see what exactly it is that you need to do. Then it's kind of a good idea to, I, I mean, this is not part of the specific planning, but just kind of look and see what you're gonna need. So like, for instance, uh, the, the amount you need changes based on your number of players. And this, you need to place dice that have a five and depending on how many you have, like for instance, if you have two players, you only need to do two of those. And then of course it goes up with more players you have. So a lot of the cards has something like that, which will help scale the game to your number of players. Oh, and one thing I realized I just forgot to mention was that when you first set up the game, you're gonna put your heroes out in one of the battlefields, either the rooftops, which counts as one battlefield, or the northeast, south, or west battlefield before you pick out your, um, your act card, because it could have an effect on you depending on where you're at just so you're aware. All right, so once you've gotten everything set out the way it needs to be to, to start play, then you're gonna move on to the hero phase in which uh, all the players are gonna roll their dice. So I'll do that for Batman and Batgirl here. Okay. And if they have any bonus dice which can be got through the game, those are gonna be rolled too. So they're just the plain white ones. Occasionally they'll get something that'll give you a bonus die. Then you're going to activate your heroes going in turn order. And on your activation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your dice and place it on somewhere on your board here to do an action or on one of the star story cards if it uh, fits to do so. So uh, a lot of the stuff on your story card is gonna involve moving to an area, doing some damage. There might be some other effects as well, but that's kind of the most common thing. And if I were to say, um, for instance, the bottom one for Batman is acrobatic attack. It says when, ac when activated by placing any die, deal damage equal to the die placed plus one on Batman's battlefield, and Batman may move freely once during this action to an adjacent battlefield or to the rooftops. So, for instance, he's on the rooftops right now is where I started him. So I could move him down to any one of the 
other battlefields from the rooftops. So I'd probably move him over here if I was going to do that particular action. If I put, let's say I put a five on that spot, so he's going to do six damage because there's a lot of bad guys over here, so I might want to clear them out. So now uh, the different villains are the ninjas, which each one has three hit points. I'm just going to pick one of these up here, but the henchmen, each one has two points. Oops. And the thug, each one has one point. So if I was going to do six damage, maybe I'd decide to get rid of this entire stack of ninjas here. So I'd go ahead and knock those out. And it's good if you can to get rid of entire stacks whenever possible, because when it gets to the crisis phase, each stack individually is going to roll it to see if they destroy a building. So that's why sometimes it makes strategic sense if a, if a stack is really tall. Honestly, sometimes I just sort of let it be and go for the smaller ones that I can actually remove. So it seems weird to be like, well, there's 15 thugs running rampant, but I better take care of these two ninjas. But um, that is a, a, a viable tactic, I think, in the game. So he's placed his thing on one of his attacks. Now, maybe Batgirl over here wants to do something different. You want to get rid of some of the story cards or the act cards or, or deal with them because a lot of them will have a penalty if they aren't defeated. So the act card, for instance, if not defeated, destroy one building. That's that's bad news. Um, criminals run wild. If not defeated, one citizen becomes a casualty, and heroes fighting and active villain stacks become wounded on any odd number rolled. That's really bad. So you have your track over here where it has your, your citizen token on the eight, and every time a citizen is killed, it moves down further on the track. You have your explosion token, and any time an explosion happens in the city and a building is destroyed, it moves further down the track as well. If either of those get to zero, you lost the game. Um, you also, by the way, have the bat signal token on the number two is where it starts. And you can choose to spend one of that to change one of your die up or down a point. So the pool is the same for all the players combined. So you have to be really careful about how you spend it. There are ways to get the bat signal points back. Uh, so anyway, back to Batgirl's turn. So she might decide that she wants to deal with, uh, since she has a six, uh, the criminals run wild. Maybe she wants to do that to stop a citizen from becoming a casualty and so that she doesn't have to worry about getting wounded if she has to stop henchmen from blowing up the city. So she'd go ahead and place that there. And to defeat that card at two players, that's all she needed. So this card is not one we have to worry about a penalty for later, which is great. So. From here, we're just basically going to go back and forth. Once both players have gone, it's going to go back to the first player. And again, he's going to choose to place a die in one of the uh, either story cards or one of his abilities. You also have certain abilities that are unique to each player. So for instance, Batman has I Am Batman. It says, when performing heroic defense in the crisis phase, you may reroll your attack die one time, which we'll get to what that means later. Uh, Batgirl has in each act phase, you may choose to discard the first act set of card drawn and draw a replacement. So if you get this out and you decide whatever's on there is a little too brutal, you can discard it, try to get new, and hopefully it'll get better. Also, every hero has a, a kind of more limited skill here, which you have two uh, skill tokens to use. And so Batman does throw Batarang once per activate hero step. Batman may discard one of his tokens to throw his Batarang, ricocheting it around the battlefields, defeating the highest ranked villain on each battlefield, including his own. That's a great ability. So when you use it, you discard one of your tokens, and you only have two for the game. Now, you can earn those back in certain ways, but it's not super easy to get them back. So anyway, you're going to keep going, placing dice wherever you may, until eventually... Oh, and I'm sorry. Every time you get back to your, your guy, you are going to roll your dice again. So you're not going to have the same roll every time. So I would roll, then i go ahead and place a die. When it comes back to me, I would roll again, and then place another one of the dice. So the skill cards that your character has, those are going to be different every round because of how uh, they're drawn. So in this case, he has. you may either give one bonus die to two different heroes, or move the citizen token one space to the right on the Gotham City track. So everybody has a different stack of skill cards and that can give you some bonuses during the game as well. So after everyone's gone we're gonna get to the crisis phase. So you basically have to resolve your story cards first. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna assume that we took care of at least some of these here. But I usually start with the big one, although you certainly don't have to. Uh, if not defeated, destroy one building. Now unlike when the uh, the villains attack the buildings later, you don't really have a way to block this. So you would basically pick a building, any one of them. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick this one here. And then when you do, you're going to flip this card that it's on, and it's going to tell you what happens. So this says, 
two explosions. Zach Leader reshuffles spent skill cards. So uh, you'd move the, the tracker down two, and then I would take my skill cards and reshuffle them. And so then I could probably use a, a previously used card at a later time. So then I'd go forward. We uh, defeated this one and this one, but this one's Criminals Run Wild. If not defeated, one citizen becomes a casualty, and heroes fighting active villain stacks become wounded on any odd number rolled. So I would go ahead and move that citizen token down one again. And now when we get to fighting the villains, uh, I could actually end up getting hurt a lot easier. So when we get to the point where the villains attack, what you're going to do, and I usually start at the north battlefield and go around, every stack you have or every villain you have, you're going to roll a die for. And in general, any odd number could cause a building to be destroyed. Now, if, let's say, Bat Girl is over here with the thug who I just rolled for. Now she could decide that she's going to try to do a heroic defense. And what that means is she's going to put herself on top of that stack, and now she's going to roll a die. And basically what she wants is anything but a one, which is, of course, what she rolled was a one. So if she had not rolled a one, she would stop the explosion from happening. Since she didn't, what she's going to have to do is she's going to have to turn her card over to the wounded side. And the wounded side has sort of a different set of skills. It loses her particular uh, unique character skill. And if she were to be wounded again, then that character is defeated and the party loses. So you got to keep your people alive. So you basically go around, roll die for each person. If the person did destroy a building, you would pick a building in their battlefield if possible. If they're all taken, you just go the next row or column over. You take whichever one you like, flip it over. This is one explosion and one casualty. So you'd move this down. And so with, with my uh, horrible approximation of how a first turn might go, uh, it's already looking bad for the heroes. But usually you wouldn't run into this kind of trouble until much later, but obviously I didn't place all the dice or anything like that. So I left some stuff open so you could see more or less how that works. So once you've done all that, you wanna make sure that you didn't get defeated which we did not. We still have a little ways to go on the explosion track. And, you know, we've only lost a few citizens. That's not too terrible. Uh, also, there's no card. I don't think there is until Act 4, where if you don't defeat it, it's just an automatic loss. Act 4, if you don't defeat the main story card, you just lose. So uh, that can be kind of rough. Then you go ahead and you discard your active skill cards. So these two would go away. You get all your hero dice back, wherever they are. If you had bonus dice, though, those don't go back to you. Uh, those go back to the uh, bonus die pool. And that's basically it. You're going to keep going uh, all the way through Act 4. You win if at the end of Act 4 none of the defeat conditions have occurred. Uh, you lose if, again, the explosion token or the system token gets to zero on the city space tracker or a hero on their wounded side becomes wounded again. So pretty dangerous. There are ways to heal, but they're not super common, much like getting your, your, um, your skill tokens back. Not the easiest thing to get, but there are ways out there. Still, you want to be extra careful, especially if you're going to be going and doing uh, heroic defenses all the time. So that's the basics of how to play the game. It's, um, it's pretty quick once you get the hang of it and you get rolling. Uh, obviously, the more players you have, the longer it will take. But uh, those are all the basic rules. So let's get to the final thoughts and we'll tell you what we thought of this game. All right, I hope that gameplay overview was helpful to you. Uh, now we're going to talk about our final thoughts on the game. Um, the artwork, I love the animated series. It's one of my absolute favorite uh, animated shows, period. Um, I love the artwork. Um, it actually inspires a lot of my own artwork um, that I do. Um, and the, his, a lot of the images on the cards, I think, were actually taken straight from the show. So um, the character cards are artwork is a little bit different, but it's very similar. So um, I just love the artwork. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's... Um... It's pretty simple. If you were a fan of the art in uh, Batman the Animated Series, you're gonna like this art. That's what it is uh, all throughout. Um, I think the you know the, the color usage is very vivid while still keeping the kind of you know 
sort of dark feel that the the series had. Uh, I really like the the character portraits on the cards or on the um, character cards and all that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I can't complain about the art. It's uh, it's fantastic. If you like that art, you will like this for sure. So moving on to components, uh, you know, I think the the cards are good quality. Nothing, you know, outstanding, but they're they're good. They do the trick. Um, I think that. You know, there's not like a lot of heavy cardboard in this game. Your uh, character cards, the act cards, uh, the little uh, squares you put the buildings on, all those are just like regular card stock, uh, which, you know, it'd be cool if it was heavier stuff, but it also probably helped keep the cost of this game down quite a bit. So I can't really complain. I, I don't think most of that stuff's going to get real badly dinged up over time. You don't have to be moving it around a lot for the most part. Um, I worry some about the buildings, and I think that's more just because I'm likely to do something clumsy with them at some point. Um, but, you know, they're, they're just the card stock, too. They're just folded cards that you stick on the table. And I'm a little worried that they could get damaged, and then they just are not going to be recoverable uh, because they're not super, super high quality. They look cool as heck, for sure. And, you know, it may never be an issue at all. I'm just, I'm just a little worried that maybe they're not going to uh, uh, hold up the test of time. The miniatures... I think are really really great uh, for uh, for a game that was I mean I I don't remember the price of this but I know it wasn't super super expensive but uh, really good quality I mean they don't have hordes and hordes of detail but neither did the animated series so you know you're not expecting to see like the the veins rippling off Batman's muscles in this thing uh, because that's not what was in the animated series so that would have been a weird choice um, it looks like they were kind of pulled uh, from the the animated series so. Uh, no complaints about that. I think they did a really pretty good job. Yeah, I think the components are pretty decent for the price point. Um, the One of the things I do like about the buildings is that they are designed so that you can stack them inside of each other. So it put, for putting the game away, it's really helpful for that. Um, you know, it's um, they hold up to having the model, you know, you can have the models jump up on the buildings and they hold up to that. So... Um, you know, they're not flimsy, um, but, you know, if someone, you know, dropped one or stepped on it, you know, that's gonna do some damage. But even if it was a heavier card stock, that could still do damage. So, yeah, that's true. um, the models are kind of a softer plastic. Um, when we got the game, um, Catwoman was, uh, really leaning forward a lot. So we had to put her in some hot, warm water to kind of bend her back a little bit. Um, she still, I don't think is quite in the in the pose that they intended her to be so but she just kind of looks like she's running now so um but you know for the price of the game i think the malls are de are decent so agreed i actually want to give a little special mention because i, I meant i i played the uh gcpd in one of our games recently i don't, for some reason i really love their model because it's got commissioner gordon and i believe montoya and they're mm -hmm. kind of standing back to back with their guns i don't know why i just think it looks super cool yeah i dig that one yeah i, I like that one a lot so anyway i just wanted to throw that in there I think they did a fantastic job integrating the theme with the game. In fact, I think they probably went and went, we want to make a game based off of this show and then built the game around the show. Um, every, like, um, it doesn't feel like they took a game and then just skinned it with, with the show, like a lot of games out there do. Um, and like, even with the playing the characters, like, they each, each character feels different. It feels like the character from the show. Um, the actions that you take feels like something that they would do in the show. Um, even if they have something kind of similar, the way it's written, the way why they're doing it, it makes sense for the, that character that they're doing that action. Um, and so, and then each act seems like it would be an episode of the show. Um, and so I think they did a really great job of integrating the theme. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, what's funny, I think when the first time or two I played it, I, I didn't really feel that way for some reason. Like, I don't know if I just wasn't really thinking about the specific parts of this right, and I just wasn't seeing it. But, like, um, you know, more recently as we played, uh, seeing what the various characters' abilities are, like, you can kind of imagine what they're doing uh, as being something that you'd see in the, uh, the show. You know, I, I was playing Robin, and... I could like jump down from the rooftop and, and take out like the most powerful uh, villain in one of the areas. And that was kind of neat because I can imagine doing that, pouncing down on Scarecrow or whoever, and then just trying to beat up his thugs. And 
um, dealing with it that way. Uh, you know, so I, I think they really did do good at capturing the heroes really well. One area I wish they would have done better is capturing the feel of the the villains, or the, as they call them, the masterminds in here. You know, if you're fighting um, Harley Quinn, that's not very different from fighting um, Scarecrow or whoever else. Um, you know, some of them have a special ability attached to them, but I don't think most of them do. I don't think even half of them do. Uh, and so beyond that, it's like, well, okay, you know, Harley Quinn has more hit points than a ninja, and, uh, you know, uh, Scarecrow has more hit points than a ninja. And that's, that's basically it. I wish there was some way to somehow integrate those characters and what they do into the game more, but I think that'd probably add probably some unnecessary complexity to it, but I, I admit I still kind of wish there was like something, I don't know what, just something there to help give me a little more feel like, oh, I'm taking out this specific bad guy rather than just it's a five-point person or whatever it was. So that's the only thing there. Um, as far as gameplay, uh, this game reminded me of um, really a couple other games that we play. Uh, Elder Sign and Thanos Rising. I'm going to kind of like focus more on Thanos Rising because it's at least superhero. But uh, both of them mechanically, you know, you're, you have your, uh, your character or whatever and you're, you're rolling dice to try to get, you're hoping to get certain um, sides, whether it's because of numbers or symbols. You're going to take those and place them on the thing that you want to do or you're going to like, you know, roll the dice and just, you know, hope you see something that you can do and place that there and then do whatever the thing is. So to me, the, the game's feel sort of similar as far as that goes. Uh, we don't have exactly the same thought on that, though. So. <laughs> For me, the game reminds me a lot more of Big Book of Madness um, because it I find it is a game that's really tough to win, um, like Big Book of Madness. And so it's it kind of feels like it's a little bit of an uphill battle and it you know if if you win like you're more you're more likely to lose than win the game um and um so for me it, i in my mind i'm always kind of comparing it to that over thanos rising um to me thanos rising in this game it's like it, they're both based off of superheroes and they both roll dice and then it kind of drifts apart and feels more like big books to me. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, see, I mean, I definitely think, I, I totally see the feel as far as what you mean, because it is, uh, man, you can start to be like, oh my god, how are we going to, oh, there's so much stuff. You know, like, it can be uh, uh, pretty intense at times. Uh, you know, I think, overall, I think the game works well. I think it's fairly easy to pick up and, and get the hang of. Um, the first... I'm going to contradict myself slightly here, but I'm going to explain why. So, the first couple rounds, I think, are great for someone learning the game. Or I, I keep saying rounds. I should say acts. The first couple acts, because you're, you're really not in much danger there. I think unless you super have, like, the worst roles in history. I, you know, I think uh, the first couple acts, you're, you're going to be able to handle fine, which is great when you're learning the game and you're trying to get the feel for how everything works, because then when you hit Act 3 and things start ramping up super hard... Um, it's good to like kind of know what you're doing. Uh, so I, I totally understand that. That being said, it almost, um, once you've played a few times, I feel like the first couple acts are almost superfluous because your character has no real growth in the game. You can kind of, you know, delay, like if you're looking at your, your two, um, uh, I want to say skull cards, I don't know if that's right, but yeah, uh, skull cards. Um, you could say, well, this one's probably going to be better later, or it sounds like it'll be more impactful later, so I'm going to put that aside and hope I get it. So you can have that kind of effect on the future. Sometimes you can do something where this will get you like a bonus die in your next act. So that's cool, but like overall, your characters don't really have growth. You're the same Batman in Act 1 that you are in Act 4. You're just dealing with a lot more stuff. So it, it kind of like sticks in my head like, okay, well... Why why do we need to have the first two acts at all? Like, why don't they just have us put out a certain amount of stuff and then now we're in the middle of it? Uh, which, I mean, I understand the first two acts, you are getting rid of some of the bad guys or you're trying to, to make the next acts easier. So I kind of understand that, but I, I still feel like it's like this really, like, you know, calm, 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 and then it ramps up suddenly into, like, being much harder. And I just wonder if it would be better to shrink the game down a little bit, especially because 
I personally feel like there's a lot of luck involved in this game. I mean, it's a dice game. You, you know, you expect that to some degree. Um, you know, one of the first time we played, it, or actually the very first time we played, like, everything was fine, and then we hit this cliff on Act 3, and it was just so hard, so fast, that, I mean, it just slaughtered us, and I was like, that's what, that's it? That's what happened? Like, what? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I kind of, um, I think they could have maybe condensed it a little more. I mean, it works throughout. It's, it remains fun throughout. I just, I almost wonder if it's a little longer than it has to be, personally. It's not a super long game, but for me, like, the level of luck to the length is a little bit weird, especially when all, like, the bad luck, of course, is going to crush you on me at the end, you'll be like, oh, we played this long, and then we just got smashed, like, in a turn, so. I don't know, but that's, that's just kind of, but I, I do kind of enjoy the thought as far as, like, okay, well, how do I want to use my abilities? Do I want to work on getting rid of the story element? Do I want to, like, take out these bad guys so they can't roll die? I need to get myself over here so I can make sure I can uh, do, a, like, heroic action and stop them from blowing up the building if something happens. So there are decisions to be made. I don't want to make it sound like it's all just pure luck. It's not. But, um, but yeah, I think it is pretty lucky, and, I you know, I was like, oh, man, I, I don't know. I, I, I do think maybe it could be shorter, but that's just me. Um, for me, um... You know, it, it is a game that seems really tough to win, um, it, but um, for me, it's something where I I almost ha almost the opposite. Like I like the first two acts are very are very simple, um, but I think they're designed to be simple so that you can kind of build up and get ready for act three and four that are going to be really tough and just try and knock you out. Um, and so it's like, and you can kind of build up in round in the first two acts. You can get your skill deck so that you're more likely to get the cards that you really that are going to help you out more in act three and four. You can build up the bat signal so that you can flip your so that you can flip your dice to a number that's going to help you out more. Um, you can make it get you know get rid of some of the you can try and pick and choose which spots to get rid of your enemies at so that when you're rolling in that critical state, you know, it's a little easier to figure out to mitigate that. Um, so while your character itself isn't growing, you're kind of growing as a team to defeat the, to be able to defeat the final act. It is, it is a luck game. Um, but I also feel like, you know, unless you are having really bad luck, you're probably going to at least make it to act, to the end of Act 3 and into Act 4, um, where there's some other games that are kind of luck and we didn't make it past one turn of the four players going, so... Listen, I talk about that, I'm sorry, it's like, <laughs> you talk about other things. <laughs> I, I fully admit we had a very bad, <laughs> extremely unlucky game of Thanos Rising where not everyone got to have a turn before we lost. Just saying. Uh, yeah. um. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're both still here. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> you also don't have a good gauntlet on. Oh, dang it. I left that upstairs. Shoot. All right. Um, so scores? Yeah, let's just go. Right. Um, so for the actual scores, for me, I would give this game, I kind of go back and forth. I would actually, I actually really enjoy this game a lot. I would probably give it, a, I go back and forth between a six and an, or a seven and an eight. Um, I will fully admit that the theme of the game does help, it does add an extra point or two, two easily for me. Um, but I actually, uh, but I really enjoy this game. I, it's a game that I know is going to be tough and going into it and we're probably actually not going to win. Um, but I don't mind games like that, especially if it's a co-op game, because I feel like we're in the fight together and we're trying, uh, you know, and it, I don't get frustrated by that. I just know that it's going to be a hard game and we're probably not going to win. So when we do win, I actually get even more excited because it's like, oh, like, I feel like we actually accomplished something when we actually won the game. Yeah, I I, uh, I I agree. It's kind of awesome when you when you do pull out that victory uh, in a game that is uh, pretty challenging like this one. Uh, so, 
my score for this, I actually was kind of fluctuating back and forth between a 6 and a 7. I think this is the first game that we've done that I score lower than, than you on. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to go with a 6. And that doesn't say I don't like it. Again, my rating score is like a 5. is like I'm perfectly just like, yeah, it's fine. A 6 is a little bit higher than that, for sure. So it's on the better side. Uh, but I I guess, like, I, sort of like how you were saying your the theme helps you out with it. That could often be the case with me, too. A lot of times it's like, well, yeah, but I get to play as Batman or whatever it is. Um, but there can also be kind of thing where it's like, if I'm excited enough about the theme, like, I want... There comes a... Like, there's a certain area where, like, I want the game to be that much better because of it. So it's almost like I can either judge it more gently if I'm not careful or I can judge it more harshly if I'm not careful. Um, and so I don't, I don't know if I'm being overly harsh or if I'm just being, like, straight on... Uh, on the level, I think that's what the, the base of this game is for me. Um, I feel like there's just a lot of weird little things that sort of bother me a little bit. Not enough that I don't enjoy it, but enough that I can't like really justify giving it a, a much higher score. You know, the thing where I feel like the first two turns are a little bit super, superfluous, uh, that's one of the things. Some of the story cards, uh, rather than uh, do a negative to you if you don't pass or succeed with them. We'll give you a positive, and then you have to pull out like another story card, which is something else you have to deal with. And I, I don't know if I've seen too many yet where I think it's really worth it to use your dice to get that bonus, and then also get the bad thing that's going to happen from that story card if you cannot deal with it, which is not too unlikely to be the case. Uh, there was one game we played where we were considering doing one if, if we were able to, but it just even then, it just didn't happen. So uh, I think those story cards, like to me, it's almost like, oh, cool, it's not something bad we have to deal with. Like, you know, if we put out four story cards, but one of them is that, it's like, neat. Three story cards to deal with, in a way. It's, you know, like, because we're just, unless we're just super lucky, we're not going to have the dice to go for that, and I feel like the negatives are, are too strong. Um, I feel like... Uh, I don't want to say the choices are all obvious. That's not really quite right, because you do have a lot of options in the game. But are you going to go and try to stop the story thing that, if it goes off, will definitely cause a destruction roll? Or are you going to deal with the uh, the bad guys that, that may or may not actually do destruction, and if they do, you can maybe stop it? Like, to me, it's, it's always... It always seems like a better idea to go for the story things than the bad guys on the field. It's more fun to go for the bad guys on the field, I think. I and like you can't to... always go off, go after the You can't. Story. Yeah, you cards, can't. So. And that's what it is. If I don't have the dice to go after the story, I go after the bad guys then. And that's cool. Like, don't get me wrong. And, and But I love those things where, like, you know, someone pounces down and, like, you had a thing where a cowman had an army of cats and I don't know how many bad guys you took out, but it was, like... She cleaned the streets. It was crazy. <laughs> like she did so good, and I thought that was even though it wasn't me. I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, that's really awesome. That's so cool. I like that. And the story is important, obviously. You know, Batman's rarely just going in to just punch someone and that's it. He's got to deal with the bomb they set up or the you know whatever that goofy stuff is going on with his villains. But, um, but yeah, I uh, I, I feel like it's it's kind of obvious what you want to focus on, and then if you can't do that, then do the other thing. So, um, and then, yeah, I just think you're going to play a lot of games, or at least, well, I shouldn't say a lot. There's some number cruncher that could figure this out more specifically than I could, but there's going to be games that they just don't go your way, and you just can't do it. You're just not going to be able to do it, and you're going to get to the fourth round, or act, or whatever, and you just aren't going to get the dice die rolls, and that's it. Like, you, you know, you have ways to mitigate your rolls, for sure, like the, um, the bat signal lets you move it up or down one if you have you know, points left. Some some of the abilities will let you do that. Um, but it's, I don't know, I still feel like there's there's not enough of that for it to feel not pretty darn luck-based to me. Um, which, again, I feel more comfortable about if they'd shortened it up a little bit. Maybe drop, maybe drop, I'll, I'll, I'll say drop the first act. We'll keep the second act and just drop the first act and maybe that would be fine. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know, I, you know, uh, that's just me. So, I guess you can always house rule that if you want to, but just, you know, out of the thing, out of the box, you play the first two acts and you play the second two acts. ta -da! Like, very obvious, so. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I'll absolutely play it again whenever, uh, but am I going to pick that over, 
be extremely similar. The <laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, to me, to me, the series similar uh, Thanos <laughs> Rising, if if I'm going just on gameplay, if I want to like do the roll of dice and play some to do a thing, probably not. Um, even though like theme wise, I, I do like Batman better than the Avengers in general. Uh, Avengers movies are fantastic. I like to point out that he's more of a Marvel person. I'm more of a DC. So we have, I think, a little bit of Maybe we might have a little bit of a bias going on here, too. Uh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're actually wearing uh, Batman stuff, and I'm wearing a Deadpool shirt. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, still, though, uh, Batman the Anime Series is the one that made, is the thing that made me say, you know what? Maybe DC's okay, and it's good, <laughs> even, and oh, God, I like it as time goes on. And seriously, I will, if, listen, <laughs> if you're going <laughs> to Oh my gosh. If you're going to give me either a stack of Batman comics or a stack of Avengers comics, I'll take Batman every single time. <laughs> every single time. You know why? Because Batman always wins. That's why. Even in the battle of which <laughs> comic book am I going to take? So, uh, anyway, I feel like I've gotten like way... Um, derailed. Derailed a little bit. But, <laughs> anyway, the basic thing is, uh, it is a game I like, but i got to give it a six. One thing I would uh, just... A minor comment that I wanted to add, add in is that um, you almost have to kind of play around with the team ups that you're doing, oh, yeah. depending on the number of players that you're using. Um, like Catwoman is a really fun character to play, but I would definitely not recommend using her if you're only doing a two player mm. game. Um, her rule with placing the dice on the cards is just too hard when you're there's only two of you playing. Um, might be doable with three, but I think four, four or five players is kind of ideal to use her. Um, and to a minor extent, I think that, uh, the, uh, Gordon and the police department is kind of the same way because of a card or a ability that they have with Bullock. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's just, it's less bad, but, you know, it, because it's kind of, a matter what you roll, but if it goes off, it's harder to n negate it w when there's only two of you playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you can kind of avoid that bullet card if you want to, but then another one of their uh, abilities on their card is so tempting because you get a lot of reward for it. You get two bonus dice right off that you can use right away, uh, but if you roll doubles, it's it's bad, bad news. So, um, yeah, it's, it's trickier. There's a lot more... Um, I feel like you take a little bit more risk with them than yeah. the other ones. But yeah, with the, the Catwoman thing, I, I played a solo game two-handed and I was using Batman and Catwoman. And it's just a problem when you're when you're trading the first player uh, marker back and forth. If she's first, she cannot play a die in a story card, um, at least not in the first turn, because she can't do it until someone else has played a uh, die in the same story card. So she's really hampered in a two-player game. Not too big of a problem when there's more people placing dice. So, any other thoughts about the game? Nope, that's it. Okay, fair enough. So anyway, I hope this uh, review has been helpful to you, and um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe, click the little bell icon so you'll know the next time I put a video out. Um, beyond that, I look forward to seeing you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. Bye. In this game, Batman and one of his... Oh, it. nope. Start over. You get the Act 2 cards out. There's, um... Actually, not quite yet, I wouldn't. I'm gonna edit that. Ha 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 ha. Yes. I need to talk. <laughs> you're looking at me weird. It's freaking me out. Stop it. Now you're making a blooper. Cut it out. <laughs> Alright. Very appropriate to bust out the martial arts made when we're talking about Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go fight for a while, so. <laughs> <laughs>